Okay, when I said that I was only wanting to make the video one part, I kind of lied. I kind of feel like keeping keep going a little bit. And, I, and excuse me if I'm a little less articulate than I could be. I'm a little tired. It's uh, 3.30 in the morning. But I kind of feel like I want to make this now while I can, you know, while the timing's good. But um, to expand on the point that I was making in the first part, the main effect of 9-11 was not merely the death of 3,000 people. It was the shattering of the perceptual fl framework, the framework of perception of every American, pretty much. Just the way that we thought of ourselves, the way that we thought of our position, and the way that we viewed things, pretty much, was entirely changed. Um, the terrorists, pretty much, they looked at us and they knew that we felt secure. We knew that we felt safe. They knew that, you know, in their countries, their people were, um, you know, fighting and uh, in danger. And they hated the fact that we felt so safe over here. They, it really, I think, I really think it bothered them. So they didn't just want to kill. I mean, they did that with, you know, the bombing of a few U.S. embassies and U.N. buildings in the 90s, you know, the attack of the USS Cole. But none of those things really, um, well, it didn't happen in America. And it really didn't change the way that we thought of ourselves. I mean, um, their main idea behind 9-11, besides, you know, trying to kill as many people in as showy of a way as possible, I mean, their main target was New York City, the biggest city in the country. And they planned it in such a way so, well, the first, when the first plane hit, it would be entirely a surprise. But in the minutes after that, they knew that all the news cameras and everyone would be out there watching it, so that when the second plane hit, it would be a huge spectacle, like everybody would be watching. They knew that. And um, it was part of a, you know, as sick as it sounds, it was a show, pretty much, that they wanted to put on for the whole country. Because, you know... They call them terrorists for a reason, rather than just murderers or um, killers. Because, you know, a murderer kills, and uh, he might, ha might have a reason for killing. But a terrorist, his motive is a little different. Murder is not the end in itself. Murder is a tool. And it's a tool towards... Well, terror. The terrorist, by um, killing people on such a massive scale, in such a showy way, in the middle of New York and, you know, Washington, um, all that just horrifies us and just shake, shakes our core. Because it's not something that happened, like, it's not something that happened in um, another country. Like, say a public square is blown up in Pakistan, or there's a suicide bombing in Israel, or, you know, something like that. Yeah, we might think, oh, that's terrible, but we don't really feel the impact. It, like, it's, it's abstract. But this thing that happened in New York, everyone could feel that. Even people who didn't live near New York, like I said in the first part, they were evacuating buildings in Los Angeles and Seattle and New York and, you know, Chicago and Denver and Atlanta, no matter where you were, there was that notion that you could be the target, you know, or that your area could be targeted. And the terrorists knew all this. They pretty much knew all this would happen. And their idea, they just wanted us to be afraid. They wanted to pretty much just take our take our secure, feeling of security and just break it in half. And I'm very sorry to say this, but the terrorists succeeded, unfortunately, because we never were the same afterwards. We 
we never felt secure afterwards. Even now, we feel a lot more secure just because there hasn't been an attack in 10 years, but like a major one in America, that is. Because, um, to be honest, for the first five years after 9-11, the, the constant thought was, when's the next 9-11 going to happen? Because everyone was saying, oh, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, you know. It was especially prevalent in the first year or two afterwards. It was really like a, a tense time to uh, to be around. And I was old enough, you know, at the time, in my mid-teens, to, to understand what was going on, you know, to a pretty sophisticated degree, because I was a pretty intelligent and intelligent person. You know, I was already reading newspapers every day before 9-11 even happened. Of course, my interest went up dramatically because of that. But, um, anyway, the, the terrorists, like I said, they, um, their, their purpose in doing this was to inspire terror. And, unfortunately, a lot of the politicians that we had in office were the gift that kept on giving to the terrorists because they kept perpetuating this fear. Um, I used to be cynical enough to think that they were using this for solely for political ends, which, I mean, yeah, they were to a degree, but I think they were also genuinely scared themselves, and they were responding in just whatever way they knew how, you know? And, um, you know, as much as it might have been wrong, some of the things that a lot of politicians did, I can't completely condemn them anymore because I think that most people, if they were in that position of power, would have reacted the same way. I mean, uh, things just became very, uh, very convoluted after, you know, we had this whole, like, walled off mindset, this whole fearful thing. And like I said, the main thrust of that continued on until 2006, when I think we largely broke away from it, not completely. I think the 2008 economic disaster sort of shifted our focus away from terrorism as the main issue, but it's always like the number two thing lurking in our minds. But I wanted to talk about something else, which was closely related to 9-11. Back in May, you might remember that, they, that the U.S., killed in line. And when I heard this news, I was standing outside my Wawa at the end of my shift talking to um, some fellow employees there. Um, and a regular customer walks up and said, hey, did you know that they killed Bin Laden? And we're like, what? And they're like, yeah, they killed Bin Laden. And they, we, 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 they told us the story. And instantly I felt just a surge of emotion in me that I never could have predicted that I would have felt. I mean, I didn't really think I cared about Bin Laden as a person, but when he was killed, I just felt the surge of just this feeling of relief, like something inside of me had been clenched like tightly. And I didn't even know it was clenched tightly, but as soon as he was killed, I just felt this relief and this satisfaction wash over me. And it really made me feel, realize, you know, it really brought home to me how emotionally connected to this whole, to, you know, 9-11 and the events that happened afterwards I became, you know. And it's not just me, it's everyone, I think, most people. Because the fact that Bin Laden was alive and um, and a free man was just a symbol of humiliation for America. You know, he was the one man who was most associated with 9-11, and he became a symbol, you know. For the enemy, he was a symbol of, um, of leadership and resistance and identity, even. And for us, it was a symbol. He was a symbol of... Well, first of all, he was someone to hate, but even more importantly, he was just someone we couldn't get, you know? It was, as long as he was alive, we were losing, more or less. I mean, not in any actual way, but...
but in a psychological way. And in many ways, that's even more important than... Or not really, but it's just as important as the literal, I think. And when we killed him, it was finally closure, in a way, for 9-11, because we, um... You know, we got the man who was most associated with the attack. It wasn't, you know... To be honest, I thought that he'd, like, dropped dead of kidney failure in a cave and we'd find him, like, three years later. You know, something totally unsatisfactory like that. But, no. He experienced... You know, he was given the punishment he deserved, which was death. And I truly believe that. That's what he deserved. And it was just so much more satisfactory to know that it was delivered by us, the Americans. And, you know, I don't think I've ever felt as patriotic as I did when I heard the news. Um, my roommate, the paratrooper, and I, we wanted to drive around Philly with American flags, shouting at everyone on, this, on the street that we saw that Bin Laden was dead. And it really bothered me that I couldn't find a single American flag in, in our apartment. Because I really wanted to have one to uh, wave out the window and just celebrate. I mean, I might one day tell the story of how, in the space of the last ten years, I went from being patriotic to disillusioned with America to being entirely hateful towards America. And then coming back around to being patriotic once again. I mean, I went through that entire journey over the last 10 years from, you know, supporting America without really thinking about it, to questioning America, to downright hating America, I would even say, to sort of begrudgingly accepting America, and then finally loving America once again and being patriotic, like fully understanding why I'm being patriotic. And this is a story I would like to tell sometime, not now, because, I mean, this has already gone on long enough, and that's, this is something that's going to require a lot more thought for me to put out my story a lot more in detail. But when, I, when Bin Laden was killed, I never felt more patriotic than I did then. And uh, it was a good feeling that something went right for once. And... Um, like I said, it was closure. And, uh, well, anyway, I'm, I'm getting to the end of, uh, of what I wanted to talk about. Like I said in the first part, if you have a 9-11 story, well, you do, you know. Unless you're younger than 10, you have a 9-11 story in some way or another, and I would like to hear yours in the comments, or if you feel like it, post a video response. Because I want to hear your stories, too. And, um... Yeah. It's one of those things. Every living person is affected by it. I fully imagine that in 60 years, my... If I am lucky enough to have kids, and if they're lucky enough to have grandkids, my grandkids will be calling me up on the phone saying, Oh, Gramps, we have a history project where we're supposed to... Uh, talk to a living relative who was alive during 9-11 because we're doing a report for history class and then I'll be telling my story again to kids in the, the distant future and it's just something that's part of you know my generation part of every generation that was alive at the time so you know at the anniversary, this is the anniversary, the 10th anniversary, I don't really feel sad. You know, like, I've been through every, I've been through all the emotions of 9-11, and now I pretty much just see it intellectually. I don't have, really have an emotional reaction to it. But I know that there are still millions of people who are deeply emotional about it, and will probably remain so for a very long time. And, uh, you know, maybe at... You know, maybe I'll do more videos at the, uh, if I'm still doing this in 10 years, I'll do one for the 20th anniversary. I don't know. But anyway, thank you for watching, and um, I hope to read or watch your stories very soon.